Hello learners, in this lecture we will see how the ground floor beam bottom is put up, uh, how the ground floor side shutterings are put up and we will also try to understand 2-3 different structural drawings and uh, we will see how these structural drawings will be helpful for us to understand in putting up all these uh, beam bottoms and the beam sides. Yeah. So to begin with, we will start with this. Yeah, uh, so you can see it here, right? What has happened? If you remember, we had done the. Yeah, so if you remember, this was the level what we had done the casting, right? And I, I told you that whenever you do the casting of a column, we have to do it till the bottom of the beam. So that is the reason this uh, column is casted up to here. And you can see the beam bottom, they are put up here and the beam bottom is put up here. So actually the beam bottom should have come here only. Let me try to address this. See, as I mentioned in the previous lecture, this beam bottom, what you can see, no, they should have come it here only. But what they have done, they call this column, they have casted 50 to 100 mm less only. So that is also okay. So always remember, you shouldn't cast it more than uh, the bottom of the beam. Even if you are casting 50 mm less than that, there's no issue with that. So what these people have done, no, they should have casted the column up to this height. Okay. And then what would have happened? The beam bottom and the top of the column would have matched. But what these people did, they casted the column little less only and the beam bottom position will be here only. So next once everything is done, no, they are going to close it here also. I'll show you how those things will be closed up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you can see, and these are the props what you can see. We'll see that. Yeah. You can see it here, right? So again, it's the same thing. They have put up the beam bottoms. Okay. Again, the same thing they have done. They have casted little less, less only 100 to 150 mm less, um, less column casting. They have done it. Yeah. So you can see it everywhere. Yeah. So now, now look here. Now what has happened? The top of the column and the beam bottom is matching. So here they have casted exactly. And this is the right way of doing. So some people, what they do is they don't want to take risk and all. So instead of that, they come 50, 100 mm, they are going to cast it less only. Yeah. So once that is done, this is how it looks finally. Okay. There's one point missing here. Let me try to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's here only. Yeah. So you have to call this as beam bottom, the whatever you are putting it here. No? So this is this will act as a bottom for your beam. So it is called as a beam bottom or you can call them as a beam soffit. Okay. And these are the props what you can see it here. Yeah. So can you see the props? The word props is written here. So this props will, what the props is going to do? You can see the, you can see props here as well. So usually what we try to do is we try to keep the distance between the two prop, props as 600 mm. So it should not be more than 900 mm or one meter apart. So 500 to 600 center to center spacing is a good spacing, right? So what does, wh why we are going to do that? Because first thing is that we have to uh, balance the beam bottom. And after that, you're going to keep the uh, beam reinforcement, the beam sides, and then you're going to pour the concrete. So it has to take that much amount of load, right? So in order to take that much amount of the load, we have to give all these props and you have to make sure all these props are vertical. They're not tilted and they are good to use. Those kind of props has to be used. So here you can see the steel props, but sometimes when you go, when you look into the local construction, they make use of the wooden props. These are called as wooden baileys. So this is okay if you're doing a small construction of a house and all, but you work for a bigger company and all then they have a requirement of using the steel props something like this you have a small adjustment here with that nut and a bolt you have a small lever there you can try to increase the height of the props or you can try to decrease the height of the prop how wherever it is required those things can be done yeah so you can see it here again it's a local construction here okay so that is the reason what they've done they made use of a uh, wooden bail is here so you can see it so this is a beam bottom so here it is a circular column and look where they have done it okay again the top of the column and the beam bottom is matching right so look into the beam bottom and this is how it is put up you can see it even here as well yeah so you can see it practically how those things are done yeah once those things are done so uh, this is called as yeah we'll go back you can see this shuttering it's a shuttering now see i'm using two words now one is for the beam bottom, I'm calling it as beam bottom or the beam soffit. And for the vertical element, I'm calling it as a shuttering. So this thing, what you can see the red one, no? it's a beam shuttering where this horizontal element, what you can see, you know, that is a beam bottom or the, you can call it as beam soffit. Yeah. 
so this is a beam outside shuttering and this you can see as kind of a u kind of uh, uh, element here it is called as u head jack this element what you can see you know, it's a u head jack so you will put up a u head jack and over that you are going to keep a, a runner it's a 2 inch by 3 inch runner and over that you are going to keep it so what is going to happen the load transfer will happen through this runner and from the runner the load will be taken by this prop and the props is going to transfer the load to the soil So again, this is a wooden bailis what they have used here. So see, again, this kind of props, what you can see, no, wooden bailis, this is not acceptable. See, here itself, it is broken. No, So these things you cannot use. Okay. So again, look at the way they have given it here. See, in some places, they have made it to stand over the laterite stone. Some places, they have made use of a wooden, wood, wood, I mean, a small piece of a plywood. So when you're doing, again, for small construction, it is okay. But again, when you work for the bigger companies and all, uh, these things are totally not acceptable. You have to make use of a, a proper steel props and the surface, I mean, the soil, what you have, you know, I mean, the ground, what you have, it has to be leveled. If it is not level, you have to make sure it is level because ultimately the soil has to take the load of that entire uh, beam bottom, the slab and all, right? So that is why it becomes a very important uh, thing when we do the shuttering. Yeah, you can see it here, right? See, this is not good. This is also not good. Look here. One side of your wooden bale is, stamp, is on this and the other portion has come out here, right? So again, this is not acceptable, but make sure all these things are, uh, when, you, uh, when you become a site engineer, you have to make sure all these things are uh, you know, they're doing it in a right way. Yeah. So once those things are done, you can see again the uh, runner and all. This is a beam outside shuttering. So you can see the beam outside shuttering here. So let us say uh, the name of this particular beam is FB1. F stands for floor. B stands for B. 1 is a floor beam 1. And let us say the size of this beam is 230 by 450 mm. Now from where I'm getting all these things, I'll be explaining in a while. So if it is 230 by 450 mm, this bottom, what you can see, you know, this will be 230 mm. And this depth, what you can see, you know, this will be 450 mm. Similarly, now this becomes my inside shuttering here. You can see. So you, again, you can see a kind of a runner kept here. Uh, then it's a U head jack and the props are kept here, right? And you can see a kind of a, a, a element here, right? So this is called a shikanja. So what this, you can see it, right? As, as something like a sword, like... So this is called a shikanja. So what the shikanja is going to do when you pour the concrete, it will make sure your bottom doesn't go here and there. It will keep your bottom in a straight position. So that is a, a thing what this shikanja does. So everywhere you can see it's placed here. It's placed here. It's placed here, right? So this kind of elements we are going to use so that uh, the beam bottom will stay in its position and it doesn't get, uh, you know, displaced here and there, right? And you can see this part now, like I mentioned, the whatever opening extra opening you had no that have been uh, filled up with all this uh, cut pieces of the plywood in this way they are going to do you can see here as well yeah so this is a beam inner side shuttering completely coming to that so this is a top view of all your beam bottom you can see the beam bottom this is a beam uh, outer side shuttering these are the beam inner side shuttering and all right so uh, yeah, so we'll try to see the difference between what is inner side shuttering and out, outer side shuttering. Always remember, when you put up the beam bottom, beam bottom is same everywhere. When you put up the shuttering for the beams, the outer side shuttering will be taken completely. Let us say you have a beam of 230 by 450. So 450 is the depth of your beam. So the outside shuttering will go completely up to the 450. Whereas the inner side shuttering, inner side shuttering means wherever your slabs coming. Now see, once you're done with this, next you're going to put a slab here, right? You're going to put a slab here. So this becomes my inner side shuttering. So this inner side shuttering, the depth will not be 450 mm. What I'm trying to tell is, See, let us say this is inner side shuttering. Actually, what was given in the structural drawing, it was given the depth of your beam has to be 450 mm. But since this is an inner side shuttering, we are not going to keep the depth as 450 mm. Whatever is the thickness of your slab, no, that you have to deduct from this. Let us say you have a slab thickness of 150 mm. <coughs> so 450 minus 150 is what I need to do. So it comes out to be 300 mm. So this depth, what I'm going to keep now for the shuttering, it will be 300 mm. So I'll be explaining all these things through uh, help of uh, videos and all. But as of now, try to understand if it, if it is an inner side shuttering, then whatever 
depth we have for the beam you have to detect that with the thickness of the slab but if it is a out outer side shuttering now let us say this is my outer side shuttering right you don't have a slab from here so here the complete 450 mm depth of the beam will be put up wherever you have inner that point you have to detect the slab thickness yeah so let us say this is gb2 and the size is 200 by 600 so this will be my 200 and this will be 600 but actually it won't be 600 i'll be telling you uh, whatever is the thickness of the slab now that you have to deduct from this so 600 minus let us say it is 150 so this will be 450 mm okay uh, mistakenly uh, i've written it as 600 let me make it as 450 yeah so it comes out to be 450 mm yeah So again, this is a, again different way of doing the uh, beam bottom and the beam shattering. You know now, let us say this is GB1, which is having 300 by 600 mm size. Let us say this is GB2, this is GB3, and this is GB4. Based on that, the shatterings will be arranged. Yeah, so you can see this guy, right? How he has arranged all the beam bottom. You can see, a, uh, yeah, now it's interesting. You can see a slab here. So here, over this, your slab is going to come, right? And the same thing, you can see a kind of a board he is keeping. These are the... Uh, steel plates what is keeping which is two feet by three feet whatever he is keeping it there no the same thing is gonna come here as well so in that case this particular beam what we have no it becomes my inside beam so that is the reason what i told you to detect the thickness of the slab from this particular depth anyhow in the next lecture we'll try to understand all these things in a better way right yeah so so far what we saw is how the beam bottom has to be put up the beam outer outer side shuttering and the beam inner side shuttering now we'll take you to some of the structural drawings and we'll try to understand them. Yeah, so this is how our drawing is given. What is written here? First floor level framing plan. Framing plan in the sense how the shuttering layout has to be put out. Okay, so this is how it is. It's a column here. You have a column here. Okay, and you have a column here. You have a column here. And what beam is coming on this particular column? It is written B1. What is the size of a beam? It is 300 by 750 is a depth. 300 is a width of your beam on this particular, right? So same thing will be executed on the side. Again, it's a B2. It's a B3 beam. So in this way, everywhere you have to do the shuttering. And even the level of the concrete, GFL stands for ground floor level. From your ground floor level, that is from the top of your plinth beam, what you had done, from then the top of your slab will be 4 meter. 4 meter 50 mm. This is what it means. GFL plus 450, 4050 means from that level, it has to be 4.05 meter. So in this way, you have to prepare the uh, beam bottom and the beam sets. So those... Um, values what i had showed you right the size of the beam those things you are going to get it from the structural drawings in the structural drawings they're going to mention it the name of the beam is beam b5 the size is 300 by 750 so based on that we are going to put a beam bottom here the beam outer side shuttering and the beam inner side shuttering and so on yeah so i'll take you to one more drawing now so again you can see a ground floor beam layout is given again it's the same thing what we saw for the plinth beam b1 b2 b3 and all and based on that, for this, again, you're going to get the details of that beam. And anyhow, we'll come to the details a bit later. We'll try to concentrate only on the shuttering part. Yeah, we can try to see into this as well. So again, it's written here. What is written? Plan, first floor, shuttering layout. See, ground floor shuttering layout and first floor shuttering layout are both one and the same. It's a different way of representing. If I'm, if let us say I'm, I'm in the ground floor now. If I see to the top, so it becomes my ground floor slab layout okay or it's it, it it will be a ground floor beam layout but if i go to the first floor and if i say first floor slab layout or first floor beam details that means it's the same thing okay it's a two different way of representing now you can see it here these are the shuttering layout what they have given you can see the column here a column here a column here column 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 and what is the size of a beam you have to use here the name is given b1 it has to be a 9 inch by 15 inch beam. Similarly, here it has to be a 9 inch by 15 inch beam. Similarly, it has to be a 9 inch by 15 inch beam. And what should be the thickness of your slab? You can see something written here, 6 inch thick. 
six inch thick. That is the thickness of your slab has to be 150 mm. We'll see that again, but this is how a structural drawings has to be understood, right? So everywhere, wherever, and what is the symbol of this? The symbol of this means you don't have any shuttering to be done. I mean, you don't have to put your, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, the slab centering plates. It's a kind of a cutout here, okay? So this is how it has to be done. I'll take you to one more drawing again because it's always difficult to understand through one drawing. That is the reason I show you two, three different drawings. Yeah, you can see it here, ground floor roof, because it's a ground floor roof, shattering details is what they have given here. I can try to look into the drawing here, what is given, it's again the same thing. They have given the size of your beam, that this particular beam is B1, which is nine inch by 21 inch, B2, which is nine inch by 21 inch, again, B3, B4, B3, and, and what slab is gonna come here? It's a six inch thick slab. So everywhere the beam details will be given based on it, the beam bottom, the beam outer side shuttering, the beam inner side shuttering will be put up, right? So in this way, you have to understand the structural drawings. So again, you can see a cutout here, right? Cutout in the sense it's open. So that means you don't have to put any uh, slab centering plates here. It will be left open wherever you have the lift and all those portion, we are not going to do any slab casting and all, right? You can see a lift coming here. So again, it's a stair portion here. So in this way, you need to understand the drawings and based on that, the execution will be done on the side. Yeah. So I hope uh, this is understood up to here. In the next lecture, we'll take up how the beam reinforcement has to be understood, how the slab centering plates are put up, and then we'll try to see one complete uh, uh, video of how these things are practically put up. So I hope uh, this is understood up to here. We'll see you back in the next lecture.